today we're talking wastegates and the two different types. Here we have a classic external wastegate. This is a Tile MVR 44 mil wastegate. We keep these in stock and they work flawlessly. These are extremely popular for just about every turbocharged application. When one doesn't flow enough for something like a twin scroll or a V8 application, we just use two of these. They're fantastic, very, very reliable, simply do not fail. Now, the other option that most of you are already familiar with is going to be an internal wastegate flapper. As you can see here, this is a stock Subaru Turbo, and it has the stock internal wastegate flapper. Exhaust goes in here, spools the turbo, spin, 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 and once it builds enough boost, it will push the wastegate flapper open, allowing exhaust to escape here, not go past the turbine wheel, and in turn, keeping boost in control. <laughs> The external wastegate does the exact same thing, but is obviously much, much larger. As I said, this is a MVR, a 44 mil wastegate. This internal flapper here is, I would estimate, probably not more than maybe 30 to 32 millimeters. Needless to say, these are able to flow much better than these. However, if you are running a stock turbo, you don't actually need an external wastegate. This internal wastegate will do the job just fine. You can pick up a little tiny bit of power when adding a larger external wastegate, but in my opinion, probably not worth the trouble unless you're trying to shoot for some type of record on the stock turbo. <laughs> get an idea of what's going on. We've got a collector here that is already set up for an external wastegate. This is used when making a turbo manifold. This one right here of course would be for a four cylinder. You'll have your four cylinders or four runners go in here. This is the outlet for the turbo. And as you can see here on the side, we have a very large, very nicely tapered port that is perfect for the external wastegate. Now, of course, this is just an example. There's no flanges on this yet. This is just a universal collector that we use on a lot of our turbo manifolds. It will get the flange for the MVR welded here. Well, it will actually have a little extra pipe material to position the wastegate slightly further away. And then it will also get a little bit more, more material and the V-band turbo flange here. This collector is set up for a V-band inlet turbo. We would not use it on something like this stock Subaru turbo. Although you could, because it does have a round inlet uh, we just wouldn't use the stock Subaru Turbo on anything but a stock Subaru. For this situation, it is literally just here to be used as an example so you can see the internal wastegate. In case you're having a hard time visualizing, the actuator for this internal wastegate flapper. They will normally look something like this. This will bolt to the compressor housing at the front of the turbo, and this, will, this arm will then come out and move the flapper open and closed. Now, 
a very common misconception for these internal wastegate actuators when they have a top port and a bottom port you are able to get better boost control versus an actuator that only has a top port but these two ports do not function the same as the top port and the bottom port on an external wastegate. Let's talk about why. On an internal wastegate, the top port will use boost pressure that pushes down on a diaphragm in here, in turn pushing this rod down and opening the wastegate. This means if you want to run only wastegate pressure, you would put this port to the compressor side of the turbo. That is the top port to the compressor side of the turbo because boost will then press down on the diaphragm in this housing, which is connected to this rod, which will then press the wastegate open. In the case of an external wastegate, this top port also presses down on the diaphragm, but it needs to be noted that this particular wastegate needs to have the diaphragm pressed up to open and allow exhaust to escape, meaning you would want to use the bottom port to a boost reference to push the wastegate open. The top port can then be used in conjunction with a boost control solenoid, which will then allow the ECU to control how much boost goes to the bottom and to the top port of the wastegate. This is extremely helpful and provides very, very good boost control. We normally use our VE four port solenoids, which can get three, sometimes even four times the boost that you can get from just spring pressure. So they work very, very well. The common issue is many people with an internal wastegate actuator that has a top and bottom port get confused. They will run a boost reference to the bottom port only expecting that to open the wastegate. This is not the case. This will not open the wastegate. This, in fact, will help hold the wastegate shut, absolutely causing an overboost issue. So again, just make sure you understand exactly how your wastegate actuator or wastegate is working and plumb them accordingly. If you have any questions at all, this is not something you want to find out what works by trial and error. You simply need to do it right the first time. Call us. We're always there to support and we offer all of the blue solenoids, fittings, tile wastegates, as well as TurboSmart wastegates and internal TurboSmart actuators. So we even have electronic TurboSmart wastegates. So whatever you need for boost control, we have you well, well covered.